Hi, this is Clint Lanier, a college assistant professor at New Mexico State University in professional communication, and I'm going to talk to you about how to write instructions. First of all, the, I think the first thing that you need to consider is why are instructions important in the first place? Well, I mean, the obvious choice is this, because users may depend on completing the process accurately. Now, I got this from a there's an old TV series called MASH, and in that TV series there's a bomb dropped in the camp, and Hawkeye and Trapper John are trying to, to furiously uh, defuse the, the bomb, and the instructions read like this, cut the red wire, and so Hawkeye cuts the red wire. And then the next instruction, the next step says, but first cut the green wire. Well, obviously that would lead to lead to problems, and it's kind of a silly example, but it's I think it's the most obvious. So why are instru instructions important? Uh, first of all, just to help uh, readers out or help users out with a product when it comes to, uh, to safety and to using the, pro the, the product accurately. However, I think there's a more, uh, a more relevant example, and that's because corporations need users really to do it for themselves. When you buy just about any product, any electronic, electronic product or really any product, you've got about 30 days in which you can call the manufacturer and say, how do I use this thing? They don't want you to do that. See, they, they put that on there. They put that 30-day free kind of call and, and get your questions answered. They put that on there to sell the product, to make you happy about using it. But the, the, the kind of the ugly truth is they don't want you to use it. This is why. Now, assume we sell about 50,000 computers in one year, which is a, a very, very low number, obviously. Now, if every user called us twice for 20 minutes, for each call, that's a total of 2 million minutes spent on tech support. Now, even if we're talking about outsourcing these people to China, we're talking about 33,330 person hours at $15 per hour, which is about what it takes, I'm sorry, not China, but India, if we outsource to India, uh, we're talking about half a million dollars per year spent on labor only for these phone calls. Okay, now that's just twice within, uh, within 30 days of, of using it. So it's important that if we can get the user to do everything themselves, to read the instructions and to be able to perform the tasks and install the software and use the software, then we can actually save money in the long run. So, to be quite honest with you, this is why the study of instructions, uh, this is why money was poured into it. Nobody really cares about instructions other than it, it's going to save money, okay? Uh, it's kind of a pessimistic view of it, but personally, I, I think it's the truth. So, why is, it, is learning about instructions and instruction writing important to you? Well, to be honest with you, much of your work will involve creating instructions for something. You might be training a new employee or a technician. You might be recording how to run a test, a procedure, or experiment, or you might be telling someone how to build something you've created. All three of these have happened to me in the workplace. Remember, I, I used to work for IBM, I used to work for the U.S. Army Research Lab, and I've had to do all, all three of these things, training somebody, uh, training a new employee, for example, um, and how to use the software, how to do a process that we have there, uh, recording how to do something, and, and then uh, telling others how to do it. So this is some, these are things that you probably will do in the workplace, you know, in, in all honesty. So this is important, important. These are important lessons for you. As far as the study of instructions, where do we get this information from? Well, we combine a lot of different disciplines. Uh, cognitive psychology, in other words, a study of how people understand information. Composition study, how people read information. Graphic design and art, how people process visual information. And then finally, technical communication, how we combine the findings from above to create these very usable instructions. Um, so there's a lot of science that backs up the stuff that we're going to talk about today and how to use, or how, rather how to create uh, good instructions. Let's talk about just briefly the evolution of instructions. You see there in the background you've got all those binders, you see all those big white binders? Well, all five plus one little pamphlet, so five binders plus one little pamphlet were all um, included 
in a new computer system made by Zenith in the early 1980s. Can you imagine reading all of those instructions on how to use your computer? Now, at the time I took this, which was years ago, at the University of Memphis when I was a professor there, I found this box in a storeroom somewhere, and it was how to use whatever new desktop they had just passed out in 1982 or 1983 at the University of Memphis in the English department there. And now that pamphlet that I put on top of it, that was a pamphlet. Those are the instructions, in other words, for the new HP laptop that the department had bought me. And we don't even get those anymore. So look at how, how much instructions have changed over the past, what, 30 years, 40 years almost? Um, they've changed quite a bit. And they're going to change even more. As we become better experts at whatever type of technology we're talking about, instructions are going to become uh, smaller and smaller and smaller as we become more familiar with whatever that technology happens to be. Let's talk about the parts of instructions. Now, instructions as a genre are very easy to create because there are very specific guidelines on creating them. There are four parts of instructions. The introduction, the list of parts, the process, and then finally, the troubleshooting or solution guide. Now, what's good about just having these four parts is each of those four parts has defined pieces in them. So as long as you say, okay, this is the introduction, this is the list of parts, process, troubleshooting, as long as you can check off those boxes, you're, you're in the clear. And within each of those sections, as long as you have all the pieces in there, then again, you're in the clear. Now, first of all, the introduction. What does the introduction contain? It contains a subject, scope, aim, intended audience, motivation, description of items, and list of warnings. First of all, the subject. What are these instructions about, generally speaking? If you say installation guide for uh, Microsoft Office, well, that's the subject right there. Uh, next is a scope. And the scope is uh, what exactly are, uh, how much information are these instructions going to give you? So in the previous example, I said installation instructions or installation guide for Microsoft Office. Now, notice in that it says installation guide. Uh, in the scope, it would be this, these instructions are being used to install Microsoft Office, not to use them. AIM is exactly the same. So in other words, AIM is what exactly are these instructions going to do? In this case, installation guide. Intended audience. You actually have the opportunity when you write instructions to say who the audience is for these instructions. So the intended audience for these instructions are first-time users of Microsoft Office. Next is motivation. Motivation is important. Remember, we want people to actually read and follow these instructions. So why should they do that? The motivation is our opportunity to say, this is why you need to follow these instructions. So uh, again, picking up on that, that example, installation instructions for uh, Microsoft Office. The motivation might be, use these instructions to quickly and easily install Microsoft Office so that you can begin using it right away. That's the motivation. Okay. Uh, next is a description of item or process in question. That, this is actually what it is you're installing or what the procedure is actually about. So, for example, if you're a nurse and you are giving instructions on how to use a stethoscope, you would discuss this is the model type of stethoscope that we're talking about. If you're a mechanic and you're talking about working on a particular vehicle, this is the model of vehicle, and this is the uh, size of engine that we're working on. And then finally, a list of warnings. These are any warnings that you, ha that you have to include. Now, some of the obvious come to mind, like uh, don't stand in a bathtub while you are using this hairdryer, okay? Uh, but some other kind of unobvious. So uh, if, for example, you are installing a new hard drive, you want to make sure that you back up all the files on your old hard drive before you do, uh, before you uninstall it or something like that, right? Or if you, okay, this is a good example. So if you are, um, say, defragmenting your hard drive or if you are wiping your hard drive, you want to make sure that any files that you want to keep are backed up somehow because once the process takes place, all those files are gone. So that would actually be in the list of warnings as well. So it doesn't have to be Physical warnings, it can also be like warnings that have to do with the data or with whatever it is you're, you're doing, okay? 
Now, in the inter introduction, much of it can actually be accomplished with uh, simply an informative title and the first couple of lines. So let me give you an example. Installing and using the simple script.php function, that would be the title. The first two lines of these instructions would say, this guide is intended for first-time users of PHP who want to quickly and easily install and use a PHP function that captures and sends emails from each HTML forms. Okay. So the first sentence, basically, of these instructions and then the, the title. But look at how much this does. If you just look at the title, this gives us our scope, our aim, and our subject. What is the subject? Uh, the simple script.php function. What is, our, sub, uh, what is our, our scope? Installing and using. Same with our aim. Okay, so all of that is, is done with the title. You can do the same thing with your title. If you simply make an informative title, it will uh, basically compile all three of those in the same thing. Next, we can have, again, this is the aim, install and use. This is what we're going to be able to do with these instructions. Who is it intended for? It's intended for first-time users of PHP. So now we have our intended audience. Now, this is our motivation. They want to quickly and easily install. Okay, so this tells us why we should use it. Now, this is a description of the item of the process in question. It's a PHP function that captures and sends email from HTML forms. So we have everything but the list of warnings uh, is accomplished with just these first two lines, the title and the actual first line of, of the instructions themselves. Okay, So it doesn't have to be that complicated. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. The next section after an introduction is a list of parts or equipment needed. Um, and this is simply where you say that what is needed to accomplish a task. So if you're installing something, it might need two, minimum 256 RAM, uh, 60 gigabyte, gigabyte hard drive, uh, graphics card, etc. If you're talking about the equipment that you need to install something, you might need a Phillips screwdriver, five half inch Phillips screws, uh, one big bolt, whatever it happens to be. Any set of instructions that you've ever had will have something like this. Um, and oftentimes they're accompanied by graphics. So this is going to go right after the introduction and right before the process, okay? Next, getting to the process. This is the main component of the instructions themselves. And it's what really everybody thinks of when they think of instructions. It's the process. The first thing to understand is that they're sequential, obviously. They're a step-by-step -step process. And they should be numbered. Uh, rather than using uh, letters. Why don't we use letters? Because you've got 26. Once you get to uh, through the first 26 letters, you have to start being creative. Numbers, however, we don't have to worry about that. We can go to 150 or 500 steps without, without bother. Okay. Next thing that you should understand is that each action should be separated from the next. Now, if you look at one through three there, those are three different actions. One, enter your social security number. That's a single action. Two, enter your PIN. That's a single action. Three, select submit. It's a single action. So each action is separated from the next. Actions should also be separated from other information, such as resulting information or explanations. So, uh, for example, if you have a step that says select submit, and you want to say what happens after that, but you would separate it. If you notice in the example here, you say select submit, there's a space, and then it says this portion has enabled you to enter the site. Each time, time you log in, you must repeat this process. So uh, it is separated from the actual action. We do that so that when somebody looks away from the, the instructions and looks back to the instructions, they can quickly find it again, okay? Notice though that the instruction that the action select submit and the part below it are aligned the exact same way. So this portion has enabled you. That portion is aligned with select submit. They're both in the same column. They're tabbed exactly the same. So user, users can quickly see that uh, they are related to each other. Next, each step should begin in the active voice. Thus, the, a good example of something you're supposed to do is Say, click enter, check the box, select the banana, or whatever it happens to be. Those are active voice. In other words, 
the action is in the verb, and the verb starts that uh, particular step. So click, check, select. Those are all verbs, and they're all the uh, uh, they're they're all the um, put into the present tense now. So versus passive voice, the user should now click enter. Okay, look at all of the words. We've got one, two, three, four, four words. Uh, that come before what the user actually has to do. There's no need for that. So start it with the active voice, start it with a verb right up front, all right? Next thing to remember is that steps and numbers should be in their own column, just like the bullets and information here. If you notice, all the bullets are in their own column, all the text is in its own column, okay? Do the exact same so that we can quickly and easily find information. Next, keep the steps as brief as possible. Just give them a command. Do this, do that, do X, do Y. There doesn't have to be a, a long explanation for it. You, next, you number only the steps. Now, you, remember, only actions are steps, okay? So only number things that they're actually supposed to be doing. You don't number resulting information. You don't number things that they might have to consider. You don't number uh, definitions. Only things that they actually have to do. And then next, you want to use and refer to graphics as much as possible. Instructions are a great place to refer to graphics because it helps people understand exactly what they're supposed to be seeing when they kind of accomplish a task or how to, to complete a task, okay? The next section, the large section, is the troubleshooting section. The important aspect here is that possible problems are given uh, viable solutions. And these are the lowest common denominator problems. If you've ever, go, go home and, or look at your instructions for your TV. Uh, chances are one of the very first troubleshooting uh, instructions or troubleshooting prints, uh, in the list will be, uh, my TV won't turn on. And the troubleshooting solutions will be things as simple as, make sure that your TV is plugged in, one. Uh, two, make sure there are batteries in the remote control, and so forth. So the lowest common denominator, the, the really simple things. From a question of business, this is the last shot at really helping your customers before they can contact you. Uh, present, present the information so that it's easy to understand, easy to find, okay? Make sure that they can get to this information and find it uh, and use it before they contact you and, and bug you and cost you money, right? Final considerations. Think of the physical context in which the instructions are going to be used. So how should these instructions actually be printed? Um, i give an, uh, an example of when I worked for the U.S. Army. There were instructions that were printed on paper, 8.5 by 11, white paper. And those were typically sent to people that were working in the offices. And then there were instructions that were printed on like a flip binder or a flip chart, very small and the paper was usually laminated for some reason. And they, these were sent to, to troops that were in the field that were learning how to do something or trying to, to uh, do some type of operation. And the reason why they were different was because the troops that were out in the field, they'd have to deal with things like rain and dust and mud and dirt. And so the instructions, the physical things that we printed out and sent to them had to be different than for the guys that were sitting in the office at the computer using them, okay? Remember that they're task-oriented. In, in, in most of the assignments I give for instructions, I ask that, that, they, that students create instructions not on just how to use something, so how to use a stethoscope, for example, but how to use a stethoscope for something specific. So how to use a stethoscope for listening to lungs or listening to the heart, okay? Those are specific tasks. People are designed, we are designed to figure out how to achieve certain tasks, not just to learn general concepts. It's easier for us to know how to, to tie our shoes than to tie a knot, okay? And so that's what we want to do here is, is keep them task-oriented. Also, we want to do project-focused versus user-focused. I'm going to skip that. In other words, we want to do project-focused versus user-focused. So in other words, we want users to understand how to accomplish a task and to be wrapped up in that particular project versus anything else. And then finally, minimalist design. This is a concept that says, you know, users really don't care about the why. They care about the how, okay? 
In other words, when you give somebody a set of instructions, when you tell them how to do something, you don't have to tell them why they're doing it. You just tell them how to do it. They're trusting you that you're leading them to an end that will actually accomplish a task. So they don't really care about uh, the why, they really care about the how, okay? So remember that. You don't need necessarily have to bring up, this is why you're doing X. Just tell them to do X, and then they'll do it, okay? And that's it. I hope you've, uh, you've learned a little bit about it, and I hope this uh, has been kind of a resource to help you learn how to uh, write instructions.